on the bridge when it came down. Sonar actually reporting and showing that there were cars underwater. The exact number unclear. We're also hearing that emergency crews say that they believe there were at one point eight people that went into the water. We know two of them have been pulled from the water. One of them incredibly not hurt, actually refused medical treatment. The other was taken to the hospital in very serious condition. That leaves six people who remain unaccounted for and believed to be in the water. Those who live in that area just in complete disbelief and shock. And I was in disbelief. I, I couldn't believe it. It was happening. Um, I thought I was in a dream, really. Um, never in a million years where I think the key bridge would go down like it did. I mean, I, I travel that road quite often. I have family to live um, over yeah. in Dundalk and everything. So, I mean, it's a major artery in this area. And with the debris, I can't, I can't imagine what it will do to the port. We want to go live now to Olivia Dan. She is joining us from the west side of the bridge there where many people have been diverted and obviously seeing what's unfolding here this morning. Olivia. Yeah, Megan, a lot of people coming to just take a look at the bridge from where we are. We're actually camping out on one of the neighbor's decks here. He's nice enough to let us uh, set up our camera here and really get a good view of the, the bridge. So I'm going to step aside. We'll zoom in, and you can really see just the extent of the damage here. Obviously, the focus is now on the search and rescue efforts. Uh, we just heard from the governor and several other officials, and they did uh, confirm some numbers for us. We know that there were eight victims in total. Six are being searched for right now. One was taken to the hospital and one wasn't taken to the hospital. He miraculously had no injuries. But the six that they uh, still are looking for, they believe, are construction workers who were fixing potholes on the bridge at the time of the collapse. So absolutely devastating. From where we are right here, uh, we haven't been able to see too, too much because there is another bridge kind of blocking the water. We've seen a couple boats out and about venturing more towards our way. We, we can hear and see helicopters that have been circling over the bridge. Um, but really just a lot of people are, are shocked to see this. I mean, taking a look at it with your own eyes, it's, it's just devastating uh, to think that the key bridge actually collapsed and also just knowing that the search and rescue effort is underway right now. We know it is still very much an active search and re search and rescue effort, and it will be for some time. Obviously, they have a large area to search below the surface of the water, on the surface, on the ship. Uh, we know that there's numerous dive teams in the water, so that is is really the main focus right now. And of course, there is just a long road ahead. Um, and then Mayor Scott has also declared a state of emergency for Baltimore. Governor Westmore has declared a state of emergency as well. Um, but they did say that there is no indication that this was intentional. We do know the FBI is involved in this response. But again, really just focusing on that search and rescue, maybe what caused this as well. And uh, really in this neighborhood we're in now and, and every location we've been, we've just seen so many people coming to see for themselves the damage to the bridge. I mean, people really just can't believe it. I know I was talking with one resident earlier this morning and he, he actually was awoken to the collapse of the bridge. He said he and his wife thought it was an earthquake at first. It felt like an earthquake, sounded like an explosion. And then of course they woke up to the devastation of the key bridge collapsing. But we're gonna be here uh, for much longer, just giving you guys updates as we get them. But yeah, again, search and rescue is the main priority right now. Back to you. And you Olivia. see it and still can't believe it. It's Thank you. It's so hard to believe. I mean, Olivia is on the western side. Let's go over to the eastern side. That's where we find Shannon Lilly. She's live there in Dundalk. And you can still see that image of the bridge. Shannon, any new information you've learned for us? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of new information, um, Taylor and Megan. That press conference that just wrapped up about 15 minutes ago told us we know that the search continues for six construction workers right now who were on this bridge repairing potholes when it collapsed. But what we don't know this morning, a lot of crucial information that authorities aren't sharing yet and just about how many vehicles were actually on the bridge. We, we were reporting all morning long that several, at least several vehicles were reported to go into the water. And at this point, authorities can't tell us how many went into the water, how many people were inside them. And so that's information that we are still hoping to learn. Um, but yeah, what you're looking at right now, you can see where this bridge just snapped in half when this cargo ship rammed through it around 1.30 this morning. You can see the cargo ship there over to the right side of the bridge as well. 
And the governor is confirming that the crew on the ship actually notified authorities of a power outage on the ship. So authorities were actually prepared. They were able to prepare for the collapse of this bridge. And so they were able to prevent a lot of vehicles from going on this bridge um, and, and prevent what could have been a lot of uh, casualties because of that, because they were aware uh, that this ship had been having issues with power. And so, um, but again, right now at this time, we don't know how many vehicles were on the bridge, but we're hearing that it's um, a lot of them were prevented from going on the bridge because of that warning from from the crew. Uh, but again, we will continue to stay out here, bring you these live images and new information throughout the morning. But for now, we'll send it back into you guys. All right, thanks, Shannon. That made a call likely crucial for the drivers who did not get on the bridge. Stick with us for the latest as we'll have more information and a breakdown of the events just ahead. Hey. Our administration is working closely with leaders from all levels of government and society to respond to this crisis and not but just by addressing the immediate aftermath, but also by building a state that is more resilient and a state that's more safe. All of our hearts are broken. We feel your loss. We're thinking of you and we will always be thinking of you. Governor Westmore there declaring a state of emergency in Maryland. He says the declaration will allow the state to access federal funds to help with the emergency response to what you're seeing there. He says not only are local and state emergency crews working rapidly, but his office is also in communication with the feds, including U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. The governor also adding that he is praying for everyone's safety. Stick with Fox 45 Morning News all along as we continue to follow the fallout from the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse. We'll bring you the latest developments as they unfold. Never in a million years where I think the Key Bridge would go down like it did. Back to that breaking news happening right now. A major rescue operation underway after a container ship struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge, sending the bridge collapsing down into the water. A live look right now at where the bridge would be if it were still there. This, of course, all happening overnight, and we've been getting a better look at the scene and the massive rescue operation that's now underway. We are still very much in an active search and rescue posture at this point and we will continue to be for some time. Right now, we are getting word that emergency crews believe there were at least eight people who went into the water this morning. Two of them have been pulled from the water. One, incredibly, was not hurt, actually refused medical treatment. The other was taken to the hospital in very serious condition. There are six who remain unaccounted for here this morning. They are believed to be construction workers who were filling potholes on that bridge at the time of the collapse. The question still this morning,
how many cars were on the bridge at the time of the uh, of the collapse. We know that sonar did detect some underwater. Those questions still uh, yet to be answered, as we know the investigation is still underway. We did talk about the FBI response as well to this early this morning with Dr. Tyrone Powers. If there's a silver lining to what's going on right now, it's that post 9-11 and the terrorist attack, all the agencies have kind of fused their efforts. That's why you saw the massive response and how quickly they responded. So the FBI are watching the waterways, the airways, because we're always under alert for terrorist incidents. Homeland Security are always watching these incidents. So wherever they occur, whenever they occur and wherever they occur, uh, they're ready to for a, a coordinated effort to go make sure there isn't terrorism, to get rescue people out there. They've also been multi-jurisdictional training. So when you see Baltimore County and Baltimore City and Anne Arundel County and the Coast Guard come together so quickly and there's no conversation about who's in charge of what, who's handling what, it is because we have kind of prepared ourselves for this kind of situation, thinking that there may be some kind of terrorist attack on the waterways or in the so airways. Dr. And that's Powers. why you can move out so quickly. All right, 1045 now this morning. We do want to get a check of your forecast here for those getting up and heading out. That's right. We've got Jasmine Lomax in the studio with us with an update on what we're working with this Tuesday. Thanks, Taylor and Megan. We are starting off the day with temperatures mainly in the 40s and the 50s. So as you step outside, you will need a light jacket, just a little bit chilly. Now, as we head into the afternoon, staying in the low to mid 50s, that's going to keep us just a hair above below average. So as you step out, you'll notice cloudy skies. Those clouds linger throughout the day, and this is all ahead of our next weather maker. You can already see that system on the HD radar. We've got a line of rain down into the deep south. That's all ahead of a front. Now that rain is going to push toward our region tomorrow, leading to rain as early as the morning. So notice this afternoon we stay dry with mostly cloudy skies, possibly an isolated shower late tonight. But a lot of the rain starts to move in tomorrow around daybreak. So six, seven, eight o'clock. If you will be on the roads, just note that there will be scattered showers around that time. By the afternoon, we stay mostly dry around the Baltimore area. However, a few showers will be left along the eastern shore. Most of the rain will start to move in, though, overnight leading into Thursday morning. We'll be waking up to widespread rain around 7, 8 in the morning, and the showers gradually start to taper into the afternoon. However, around 3 p.m., an isolated shower is still possible that could impact opening day. But by Friday, we are going to be back to a nice and dry pattern. We're also talking sunny skies and higher temperatures returning to the 60s for the start of the weekend. So this afternoon, our temperatures will rise to the low to mid 50s. Clouds will linger throughout the day, all ahead of that next system. That arrives tomorrow. We'll wake up to scattered showers. Then by the afternoon, the rain will gradually start to taper, 55 for the high temperature. We'll start the day with rain on Thursday, possibly looking at some isolated showers by the late afternoon possibly impacting opening day 58 for the high temperature will be dry on Friday with highs around 61 64 on Saturday then on Easter Sunday mid 60s above average with a good mix of sunshine and clouds then after that we're talking temperatures on Monday in the mid 60s with a mostly dry forecast back to you all right, Jasmine, thank you. Still ahead, we are continuing to follow the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Stay with us for the very latest on the emergency efforts underway as we speak. We're very thankful for the first responders who are carrying out their efforts in these rescues and that, that, they're, that they're doing this all through the night and today. And we're praying, obviously, for everyone's safe return. We are continuing to follow breaking news out of Baltimore here. We've got search and rescue operations underway right now after a cargo ship collides with the Francis Scott Key Bridge, causing this. What you see right there, that structure just collapsing into the Patapsco River. Fox 45 News also learning that the ship that struck the Key Bridge is a Singapore-based container ship called Dolly. According to VesselFinder.com, the nearly 1,000-foot-long vessel arrived in Baltimore three days ago, and it left port just after 1 o'clock this morning. By 1.25, maritime traffic data shows the ship suddenly diverted from its path and began to slow down. Around that time, video shows that... The lights on the exterior of the ship suddenly went off. 
They turned back on later, but smoke had begun emanating from the ship's vessel. And then a portion of the bridge was hit around 128. That is what caused it to collapse. Originally, we were told there were cars on the bridge when it came down. The exact number, that information still unclear here this morning, waiting for confirmation. Emergency crews, though, do tell us they are searching for at least six construction workers who fell into the water. They are searching for them right now. Earlier this morning, we're told two people were pulled from the water. One of them went to the hospital in serious condition. The other was not hurt, actually refused medical treatment. Many of those people, all six that they're still looking for, those construction workers were told were filling potholes on the bridge at the time of the collapse. The cargo ship that crashed suffered what we're told was a power issue, actually made a distress call, mayday call moments before the crash, but it was traveling too quickly to change course at that point. This is a unthinkable a tragedy. Uh, we have to uh, first and foremost pray for all of those who are impacted, uh, those families, I pray for our first responders and thank them, uh, all of them working together, uh, city, state, local, to make sure that we are uh, working through this uh, tragedy. We know that we have a long road ahead, not just in the search and rescue, but in the fallout following this. Uh, I think we appropriately have our attention on the search and rescue efforts currently uh, and just here alongside uh, our partners in the city to say that they have our full support. Our breaking news coverage continues throughout the day. You can find our stories online as well, but stick with us right here as we continue to bring you the very latest. You're watching Fox 45 Morning News, all local, all morning. Live from WBFF TV in Baltimore, this is breaking news. Never in a million years where I think the key bridge would go down like it did. Breaking news right now, this is special coverage of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse. A live look right now where the bridge would be. You can see the entire bridge has given way. It has fallen into the water below there. Chilling images right there. Right now, we know a search and rescue operation is underway. After that, container ship went into the bridge early this morning. That was around 1.30 this morning. We are still investigating what happened, but we are quickly gathering details. The preliminary investigation points to an accident. We haven't seen any credible evidence of a terrorist attack. Well, good morning to all of you. Thank you for joining us on this Tuesday. It's March, March 26th. This is special live coverage of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse. I'm Megan Gilland. I'm Taylor Stewart. We know Governor Westmore is declaring a state of emergency here in Maryland today. He is saying the declaration will allow the state to access federal funds to help with the emergency response. Taking you back live now, he says not only are local and state emergency crews working rapidly, but his office is in communication with the feds, including U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. The governor adding he is praying for everyone's safety. He also says the ship called in a midday after experiencing a power issue. That's new information we're getting word. That gave authorities time, we're told, to stop cars from entering the bridge, likely saving several lives. That's right. Now, City Council President Nick Mosby also released a statement this morning uh, saying, quote, we are all shocked at the horrific scenes playing out at the Francis Scott Key Bridge. As the morning comes and the reality of what we're facing becomes more apparent, I have the utmost confidence that Baltimore our citizens and surrounding communities and jurisdictions will come together to support all those affected by this tragic event. For now, we must pray for the victims and support our heroic first responders who are working to rescue and save lives. The coming days and weeks will be difficult for everyone, but Baltimore will rise up to meet whatever challenges we shall face. Let's pray for one another, exercise patience and grace as we navigate this unspeakable tragedy. Meantime, U.S. Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg also weighing in, releasing a statement on the Key Bridge collapse. He's offering his department support to local authorities and says, quote, I've spoken with Governor Moore and Mayor Scott to offer United States Secretary of Transportation support following the vessel strike and collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Rescue efforts remain underway and the divers in the Baltimore area should follow local responder guidance on detours and response.
We are also hearing a statement from the shipping giant that chartered that vessel, Marisk, saying, quote, we are horrified, but what has happened in Baltimore? And our thoughts are with all of those affected. Well, this happened this morning as the container ship was making its way under the bridge. Now, some are speculating over the structural soundness of the bridge and if that had a factor in the collapse. Earlier this morning, we spoke with an associate teaching professor for the Department of Civil and Systems Engineering at Johns Hopkins, Rachel Sangri. We talked to her about those concerns. Take a listen. I don't believe the age has uh, anything to do with it. What happens next is sort of a, a systems engineering problem, right? Um, the, the, aside from the uh, search and rescue, thinking about how to um, you know, manage uh, traffic in and out of the Port of Baltimore and uh, around the Beltway uh, of Baltimore. Um, you know, the, the, the bridge collapse, um, you know, I don't believe was a function of its age, but uh, maybe your, your viewers would be interested to <clears throat> hear um, that the bridge was a, a three span continuous um, uh, truss bridge. Um, so when one of those piers was um, w was hit, uh, was removed, uh, that means that um, uh, because the bridge was three spans continuous, um, all of the members were connected together. Um, and so what that does is that enables us to have a longer uh, span in the middle of the bridge to uh, allow cargo ships to pass through um, without significant, um, without more significant stress um, on the bridge members. Uh, so when one of those piers was removed, um, all three of those spans uh, came down. Yeah, but he it's said been it's quite a, a situation out there this morning. We want to check in with Olivia Dan. She is joining us. She's been stationed on the west side of the bridge all morning long, taking a look at, you know, the, the efforts that are underway as we speak. Olivia. Yeah, Megan, we know that the search and rescue efforts are the main priority right now, and we're actually camping out on uh, one of the neighbors here, their deck. He's nice enough to let us uh, set up our camera up here, and from here we can really get a good view of the Keybridge collapse. So I'll step aside. Uh, Emma, our photographer, will zoom in, and from here you can just see the devastation. You can also see the cargo ship that hit the bridge. Um, from, from where we are, it's hard to see with your own eye, but our camera probably will be able to see it. We do see some smoke still coming from that cargo ship. Um, and then again, you can just see just the extent of the damage. So uh, we did just hear from the governor and several other uh, state officials about an hour ago, and they gave an update on the search and rescue. We know that there were eight victims in total, six being searched for right now. One was taken to the hospital in critical condition, and another victim was taken, uh, wasn't taken to the hospital, miraculously had no injuries and just walked away. And uh, the six people that they're still searching for, we're told, are all construction workers who were fixing potholes on the bridge at the time. So, of course, just hoping that they're going to be okay, hoping that the search and rescue um, is successful. I will say the water was uh, right here at the, the mouth of the Patasco River was very choppy when we first got here a couple hours ago. But the wind has seemed to die down and the water has gotten a lot more flat. So hoping that will make the search and rescue a little bit easier. Obviously, they have a large area to search. They have to search below the water, on, on the surface of the water, and really just this whole area. So I'm hoping that the daylight and um, the the water becoming less choppy will, will make this a little bit easier for them. We're also just seeing so many people coming to stop by and just and, and get a view of this. I mean, when people heard the key bridge collapse, they just absolutely couldn't believe it. I'll tell you, when I saw this for the first time, uh, just about two hours ago, it was shocking. It really... They're not um, so really just, just our thoughts are, are with those uh, victims and hoping that the search and rescue will be successful. Back to you guys. Now live on the opposite side of that bridge and I can see you've got quite a crew around you. Any new information and anything you can update us on from, from, your, from your vantage point? I mean, the, the rescue efforts just continue this morning, Taylor. We have seen emergency vehicles coming through. Keep in mind, we have been out here since four in the morning and it's been nonstop. And yeah, you can see just the amount of media from all across the region that are out here right now uh, covering this just 
unbelievable story that we're here this morning. That press conference just wrapped up around uh, 10 15 or so. And what we did learn, Olivia mentioned that the search continues for six construction workers who were on the bridge repairing potholes when it collapsed. But what we don't know, a crucial piece of information this morning, authorities aren't sharing how many vehicles were on the bridge. You'll remember earlier this morning, they were reporting several vehicles went into the water. Um, now it, it's, it's unclear. Uh, they are reporting, governor confirming that the crew notified authorities of a power outage on the ship. So uh, they were actually able to prepare for this collapse and prevent many vehicles from driving over it when it happened. But again, there were earlier reports that several cars went into the river. So we are still waiting to learn, um, you know, if those ve vehicles are indeed um, in the river and, and how many people were inside. As of right now, they are only saying that they are searching for those six construction workers. Um, the governor, though, saying that there were no structural issues with the bridge that, that they're aware of, that it was up to standard. Um, so what happens now? We heard from Senator Van Hollen. Uh, he says that Pete Buttigieg has pledged to do everything they can to release um, early emergency funds. We also know the National Transportation Safety Board will be conducting an investigation into what happened as the search just continues. And again, we do know that two people were rescued, one in the hospital, the other not hurt. And the major focus right now is still that active search and rescue effort. So again, our, our hearts, um, our thoughts and prayers just go out to the construction crew that are still unaccounted for. And of course, as soon as we get any new information, we'll bring that to you live. But for now, let's send it back into you guys. All right, Janet, thank you. Hearts and prayers uh, also coming from former Governor Larry Hogan. As he says, you and I are praying for those missing and their loved ones and ask Marylanders to keep them in your thoughts. Uh, more uh, in response coming in here now from the Orioles as they put out a statement. We're devastated by the news of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse and send our thoughts and prayers to those involved. As we get uh, it, more images of what exactly happened here this morning, we do know crews say they were not only just searching the water, but they also had to make sure the deck of the ship was clear because it wasn't clear at one point if people had fallen onto that. We do know as we get more information about the victims involved and get more video of the situation, we'll keep you updated and bring it to you here from the tag board. Well, we are off to a cool start to the morning with temperatures still in the 40s and the low 50s. This afternoon, the clouds will linger as temperatures rise to the mid 50s. This means we'll be a little cooler than average. This is all ahead of our next weather maker. That's going to lead to rain starting tonight and into the morning. Coming up, I'll have a closer look at the timing of the rain and the potential impacts to opening day in my weather authority forecast. Back to you. All right, Jasmine, thank you. Our extending live team coverage of the Key Bridge collapse continues. Coming up, why the FBI is now involved in what police are saying about the moments leading up to the collapse. We come together in Baltimore, we come together in Maryland. First of all, our hearts go out to all those who are on the bridge and their loved ones. We pray for them. Our gratitude goes out to the first responders who, as we speak, are out there continuing to conduct search and rescue operations. I want to thank the governor, the local, the mayor, county executive, all the people gathered here as part of Team Baltimore and Team Maryland. Our breaking news coverage of this, what you're seeing right there, the Francis Scott Key Bridge, collapsing that bridge collapsing into the water early this morning right now there are search and rescue efforts underway ongoing for as many as six people construction workers they believe who remain unaccounted for at this hour let's go ahead and take a live look this is what the bridge looks like now this is where it would be if it were still there this of course all happening very early this morning just after 1 30 a.m now that the sun is up my goodness you're, you're getting a better look at that scene the the massive destruction the rescue operation that is now underway in the water below in the patapsco river there governor Westmore now declaring a state of emergency here in Maryland in response to all of this. He says the declaration will allow the state to access federal funds to help with the emergency response. 
He says not only are local and state emergency crews working rapidly, but his office is also in communication with the feds, including U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, who is uh, we're hearing on his way to Baltimore. The governor adding he is praying for everyone's safety. As for the investigation into how this happened, we know the FBI is looking into it. However, we're told there's no indication this was intentional. We are still investigating what happened, but we are quickly gathering details. The preliminary investigation points to an accident. We haven't seen any credible evidence of a terrorist attack. We're also hearing reports the ship lost power before it crashed into the bridge. The ship's lights reportedly flickered. You can see it in some of the videos that we're seeing online. And the, then the ship veered off course before hitting the bridge. Governor Wes Morris says the ship issued a mayday before colliding into the bridge, which that mayday call allowed authorities to stop incoming traffic. And stay with us as we continue to follow this breaking development from the Francis Scott P. Bridge collapse. Again, rescue efforts continue as first responders look for as many as six members of a construction crew who remain unaccounted for. Our breaking news coverage of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse continues. That bridge collapsing into the water early this morning. Look at that video there. Right now, search and rescue efforts continue. They are ongoing for as many as six people who remain unaccounted for, believed to be construction workers. Senator Chris Van Hollen spoke this morning at a news conference ensuring Marylanders that the state will receive federal help as recovery and rebuilding efforts get underway. Together with Ben Cardin, Senator Cardin, um, and Congressman Fume and others, the federal government is your partner in this effort. Thank you, and again, to the people of our state and the people of this great city. We're with you. We love with you. We will get through this together. And this happened this morning as a container ship was making its way under the bridge. We are joined now by Lars Jensen, a leading expert in the container shipping industry. Lars, we appreciate you being with us. We're trying to learn more about how this could have happened and, and needing an expert to, to kind of explain it. We, we know that there was a power outage reported, a May Day that was called. When something like that happens, how difficult is it to break or steer course from, from the direction they were going in? The, the problem on these kinds of vessels, they are so huge that if you lose power, if you lose steerage, there is literally nothing you can do. <laughs> uh, it, 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 it really is as similar. Now, keep in mind, a vessel such as the one that hit the bridge, it carries 10,000 containers. Every single container in itself is the size of a truck. So basically, you've got 10,000 trucks all headed in one direction. If you don't have any steerage, if you don't have any power, you're just going to continue it in a straight line until you regain power. Wow, that is just, oh my gosh. So when we know what happened with the, the ship reportedly losing power and then it crashed into that pillar of the bridge. Can you talk about what this means for the shipping industry overall? We know the port of Baltimore is a very busy port. You know, it has hundreds and hundreds of shipping containers going in and out every day. What does this mean for the short term and the long term impact of the shipping industry overall? Yeah, if, if I look at this strictly from the perspective of the container ships, the Port of Baltimore handled a bit over a quarter of a million containers in the last quarter of 2023. And whilst that is a lot of containers, it's actually not a great number. Uh, the nearest ports will be the ports in New York, New Jersey, and it will be the port down in Norfolk. And they are 10 times as big, which means that what's going to happen in the short term is very likely all the cargo that went through Baltimore is going to be redirected to go through Norfolk, Right. and through New York and uh, New Jersey. They can handle it not without difficulty. It will be more costly. There will be some bottlenecks, but they can handle it. So the effect is going to be massive on Baltimore, less so on uh, New York, New Jersey, and uh, Norfolk. Lars, we are taking live looks, aerial footage of, of that cargo ship just stuck into the bridge right now. You mentioned it could possibly be 10,000 cargo containers that are on board there. What happens to that ship? Yeah. How are they able to get that cargo off? How do you maneuver that? Yeah, first you need to basically right now it's stuck underneath parts of the bridge. So you need to bring in salvage companies 
to first remove these trusses from the bridge that's pinning down the ship. Mm -hmm. Only when that is done, then you can tow the ship. It's likely going to be towed back to the uh, berth that it came from, and then you can start unloading processes. This is something that's going to take a very long period of time. I just have all of those images coming back to me when we saw another container ship that got stuck not too long ago, mm -hmm. and we saw how long that took to get that ship maneuvered away and on its way. I mean, you said it'll take a long time, but how long are we talking here? Months? Could we see this take? The, the, the problem is not only the ship, but you need to also remove the remnants of the bridge from the seaway, because as long as that bridge is there, nobody can use the Port of Baltimore. Wow. And I cannot recall of any precedent of where I've seen this happen before. I mean, this, this is really a unique event. Wow. And when we look at the, the destruction, I don't know if you've seen the video, Lars, but you, you see the power go out on that cargo ship, and then there's some black smoke that kind of comes up billowing from the back right-hand side there. You, did, that, did that strike you at all? Did that make you believe that maybe something else was going on on board there? No, not, nothing offhand struck me on that one, so I, I don't think I have a good comment on that part. Okay. It, it's interesting to see, what, you know, the impact this has Absolutely. all around. Oh, and my gosh. Lars, we appreciate your time in talking with us and, and your expertise in this matter. My pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. All right, it is time. I know a lot of folks are getting up and heading out. We want to get a check of our forecast. Absolutely. Meteorologist Jasmine Lomax takes a look for us. Thanks, Mackenzie and Megan. We are seeing temperatures currently in the 40s and 50s, a little bit chilly as you step outside. You may want to grab a light jacket, but we're waking up to mostly cloudy skies around the state. Those clouds are going to linger throughout the day as we prepare for the next weather maker. By the afternoon, high temperatures reach the low to mid 50s. That's going to keep us slightly below average. So a cool day today ahead of our next system. And you can already see what we're tracking. The rain continues to move toward the east, all ahead of a front. This is on our way and the impacts start tomorrow morning. We'll be waking up to some spots of rain. So notice today, mostly cloudy skies and we stay dry. Tonight, possibly an isolated shower, but a lot of the rain starts tomorrow morning around sunrise. Six, seven, eight o'clock if you will be driving on the roads. Just be prepared for some scattered showers across the state. Then into the afternoon, a lot of that rain tapers and moves toward the eastern shore. We'll stay mostly dry until we get into Thursday morning. That's when we wake up to widespread rain across the state. We could also be talking some spots of moderate, even heavy rain. Then as we continue into the afternoon, the heavy rain clears, but there's still that chance for a couple of stray showers around 3 p.m., possibly impacting opening day. But after that rain tapers, we'll return to a dry pattern right in time for the weekend. We're looking at higher temperatures and plenty of sunshine on Friday. We're talking highs reaching the low 60s, above average and very spring-like. Again today, our highs reach 54 with mostly cloudy skies. Then tomorrow, 55 as we prepare for the next round of rain again that starts in the morning, tapering by the afternoon. Then we'll wake up to widespread rain on Thursday, 58 by the afternoon, possibly some stray showers around 3 p.m. 61 on Friday, then 64 on Saturday. And for Easter Sunday, temperatures in the mid-60s for a mix of sunshine and clouds. After that, we stay in the mid-60s on Monday with mostly cloudy skies. Back to you. All right, thanks. Still to come, we have new details on the collapse of the Francis Gunkey Bridge. Stay tuned for a breakdown of what happened and the response from officials here in the city, statewide, and at the federal level. Fox 45 News, winner of 16 2022 Regional Emmy Awards, more than all other Baltimore news stations combined. We are continuing to follow the breaking news out of Baltimore search and rescue operations continuing after that cargo ship that you see right there crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge, causing that structure to just collapse into the Patapsco River below. Look at those images. Right now we know there were cars on the bridge when it came down. The exact number, however, is unclear. Emergency crews say they believe there were at least eight people who went into the water. Part of a construction crew, six remain unaccounted for. We know two people were pulled from the water. One incredibly not injured and refused medical treatment. The other was taken to the hospital in serious condition. This morning, the Baltimore County Executive and Baltimore City Mayor offering their thoughts and prayers to everyone involved. This is a unthinkable a tragedy. Uh, we have to uh, first and foremost pray 
for all of those who are impacted, uh, those families. I pray for our first responders and thank them, uh, all of them working together, uh, city, state, local, to make sure that we are uh, working through this uh, tragedy. We know that we have a long road ahead, not just in the search and rescue, but in the fallout following this. Uh, I think we appropriately have our attention on the search and rescue efforts currently. Uh, and just here alongside uh, our partners in the city to say that they have our full support. Still ahead, we have the latest on the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Stay with us for more information on what happened, how rescue efforts are progressing, and the response from government officials. Live from WBFF TV in Baltimore. This is breaking news. What was in progress was a, a multi jurisdictional response to uh, a disaster, basically. Good morning and thanks for joining us. It is March 26th, the Tuesday. I'm Mackenzie Frost. I'm Taylor Stewart. And we're continuing to follow that breaking news. Let's take another live look at what is left of the Francis Scott Key Bridge this morning after it collapsed into the Patapsco River. It happened around 1.30 this morning when a cargo ship crashed into the structure. Here's a live look from the harbor cam. You can see what's left of the bridge. There's so much debris that has fallen into the water, and a lot of pieces of the bridge are still splayed across that cargo ship at this moment. Now, this is video from when this incident occurred this morning. Fox 45 News learning that the ship that struck the Creek Key Bridge was a Singapore-based container ship named Dolly. It's nearly 1,000 feet long and arrived in Baltimore three days ago. And according to VesselFinder.com, Dolly left port just after 1 o'clock this morning. Around 1.25, maritime traffic data shows the ship suddenly diverted from its course, began to slow down. And around that time, there's video that shows the light of the exterior of the ship suddenly turn off. Smoke began billowing from the ship's funnel. The dolly then hit a portion of the bridge at 128, which caused that collapse. Our administration is working closely with leaders from all levels of government and society to respond to this crisis and not but just by addressing the immediate aftermath but also by building a state that is more resilient and a state that's more safe. All of our hearts are broken. We feel your loss. We're thinking of you and we will always be thinking of you. All right, we have live team coverage this morning, but let's start with Maxine Stryker, who is there for us live on the scene. Maxine, what can you tell us as more people arrive and this continues to develop? Well, Mackenzie, this is still a rescue and recovery mission at this time. We know they are searching for six people in the water, six construction workers who were on the bridge at the time of that collapse, repairing, patching potholes. They were not doing any structural work at that time. Here's a view of the bridge or what's left of it right now. We know two people have been rescued. One is in shock trauma, in serious condition. The other amazingly okay and we're told did not need medical help after falling. Uh, officials initially told Told us several cars were on the bridge when those calls came in at 1:30 after the cargo ship collided. But now we're not saying whether or not drivers are trapped in their cars in the water. Governor Moore saying many cars were stopped at a bridge entrance, but it's still a big question tonight if there are more people that they are searching for. Now, Coast Guard cutters and aviation assets are part of the rescue and recovery response. Uh, you can see a helicopter above the bridge right now. They've been out here all morning. The FBI and Governor Moore are are reiterating this is not a terrorist attack. There have been no credible threats made. Now, as for that ship, we know it notified authorities, as you mentioned, of a power issue that they lost power on the ship prior to the collision. And you can see the lights go out in that video. The cargo ship apparently was coming in at a rapid speed of eight knots. There are many federal and local government entities working together on this on the ground here this morning, and a state of emergency has been declared. Transportation Secretary Pete 
Buttigieg says emergency response funds will be quickly released. And we know when it comes to transportation and shipping, this will have major impacts for days, even months to come. This bridge here has been open since 1977 and is over a mile and a half long and is a key route for so many people on their daily commute. It is fortunate, though, that this did not happen at a busier time when more cars could have possibly been on that bridge. Again, right now we know they are searching for six construction workers. Two people have been rescued from that cold water. It is a chilly day out here today. And the big question still is if there are any drivers who were on the bridge at the time and are still uh, being searched for in that water as well. Now, we know the National Transportation Safety Board will be conducting a massive investigation here. We are expecting to hear from them sometime today. We do know there is going to be another press conference in about a half hour at noon where we are expecting to learn a little more about those search and rescue operations. And we will bring that to you live when that begins. But live for now, Maxine Stryker, Fox 45 News. All right, well, let's go ahead and get over to Olivia Dance too, as we continue our live team coverage. She's on the west side of this bridge. Olivia, you've been there all morning long, and you have been talking with residents and people who have been kind enough to let you go live for us from this wonderful, unfortunately, vantage point of this devastating collapse. What can you tell us from your point of view? Yeah, Mackenzie, so we're still camping out on one of the decks here. The neighbors have been so nice, just letting us uh, really get a, a view of the key bridge here. I mean, it's just absolutely devastating when you see it with your own eyes. So I'll step out and we'll get uh, a closer view here. But yeah, there's just so many people that have, have stopped by. I actually would say there's more people now than we've seen yet. Just uh, residents that live here wanting to see this with their own eyes because, I mean, you hear the key bridge collapse and it's just shocking, devastating. You really don't even believe it until you see it. And then when you do, it just leaves you speechless. So I'm going to repeat a few things that uh, Maxine said as far as updates. I mean, we got an update from the governor uh, just under two hours ago now. They said that there are eight victims total. Six are still being searched for now. The search and rescue part of this is, is the main thing, the main focus. Uh, one victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition, and then one was not taken to the hospital and had no injuries miraculously. So really we're just hoping uh, that this search and rescue mission is successful. Governor Westmore says that the cargo ship that hit the bridge issued a May Day call before the collision, giving authorities just enough time to stop traffic on the bridge. Um, so we believe that the six people that they are still searching for are construction workers who were fixing potholes on the bridge at the time. You can actually see the cargo ship that that hit the key bridge from where we are, especially when we zoom in and uh, we've seen smoke coming from the backside of the ship. Uh, it's been doing that for a couple hours now. But again, the search and rescue mission is very much underway. There are nu numerous dive teams in the water right now. And of course, this is a long road ahead, but really the focus is just on the rescue. Of course, we're, we're praying for the victims and their families and just hoping that this will be successful. We know that Mayor Scott and the governor have uh, both declared states of emergency uh, and they have said that there is no indication this was intentional, but we do know that the FBI is involved in the response. And there, of course, is an ongoing investigation into what exactly happened here. But again, just lots of people shocked and, and can't believe what they're seeing. I mean, I'll tell you, when I first saw it for the first time a few hours ago, I, I was left speechless. I mean, pretty much the whole bridge is collapsed. So just devastating. Again, we're just hoping for um, a successful search and rescue mission. But back to you guys. All right, Olivia, thank you. Now the collapse is obviously getting national attention. That's right. Earlier this morning, Maryland Representative Kathy Slega appeared on CNN to talk about the impact the collapse could have on the shipping industry. Maryland's port is the largest for specialized cargo on the East Coast with specialized roll-on, roll-off cargo. We're one of four deep water ports that can handle the larger Panamax ships. Uh, we have a cruise terminal. So, you know, this getting through this is gonna be really hard. We have a state of emergency, all hands on deck, federal, state, local partners, you know, everybody working together right now to look for and hopefully save any of those that are in the water. Officer told me that I thought it was just a, maybe an accident, you know, but he said the bridge collapsed and I, I couldn't, you know, collapse. You know, that bridge been there for, for forever. Stay with us as we continue to track the collapse of the key bridge. This video is truly something that you can hardly believe. Ahead, we'll have the latest on the search and rescue efforts.
I couldn't believe it. I mean, yeah. I was like, there's Pizza. no way. There's no way. Breaking news right now, search and rescue efforts continue in the wake of the overnight collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Take a look at your screen. This is the scene from the Key Bridge as it collapses into the water around 1.30 this morning. Crews were first on scene just 20 minutes later. Officials say at least eight people went into the water. They were part of a construction crew on the bridge working to patch potholes. We know two people have been rescued so far. One of them was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Like you said, unbelievable. I mean, in shock, really. I yeah, mean, it, it, it's it's like, is this a movie? Right, right. Um, and whatnot. I mean, it's like I say, it's a major artery, and it's it's really going to affect not only traffic but the port. We were awakened with uh, what appeared to be an earthquake and a, lo a long rolling uh, sound of thunder. Wow. So uh, we woke up and literally we can look right out of our bedroom window and see the key bridge. But I couldn't see anything because of the darkness. And a little bit later, I got up again to check and I saw some emergency lights in the area. And Stick with Fox 45 News as we have extended live team coverage with crews on the scene right now. But first, let's get with meteorologist Jasmine Lomax with a look at your forecast. Jasmine, luckily today we don't have any rain. Uh, that's right, Mackenzie and Taylor. We're going to stay nice and dry all ahead of that next weather maker, and it is on the way. Currently, as you step outside, you'll be in temperatures in the 40s and the 50s. A little bit chilly. You may want that extra layer as you step outside. We're seeing those numbers highest around Baltimore, also in Cumberland, the lone spots in the 50s at this time. But again, we have our next system that's on the way, and we've got clouds ahead of it. Notice we're keeping track of this line of rain extending into the south. That will continue to move east today ahead of a pair of fronts, and that's going to result in rain tomorrow. Unfortunately, we're also looking at the chance for rain on Thursday with potential impacts to opening day. Coming up, we'll have a closer look at the timing of the rain and what to expect as we get closer to Easter and my weather authority forecast. Back to you. And still ahead, we have the latest on the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Stick with us until 1 p.m. for continuing updates on recovery efforts and attempts to rescue those involved. Pete Buttigieg has pledged that they will do everything they can to very quickly release emergency response funds for this important project. The National Highway Transportation Administration Administrator is on his way to Baltimore if he's not here already. They will be releasing those early funds once all, all the parties are fully engaged. Our breaking news coverage of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse continues. The bridge falling into the water early this morning after a cargo ship crashed into it. Right now, search and rescue efforts are underway and ongoing for as many as six people who remain unaccounted for. We also know the FBI is involved in the emergency response. Earlier this morning, we spoke with former FBI agent Dr. Tyrone Powers about the response and why the FBI is involved in the first place. When you have a major incident like this, whether it's a bridge or a tunnel or something in an airport or an airway, if a plane comes off the, uh, the, the runway in a different way, they're prepared to deal with this because of that history. So they're involved. Then the other thing that's important about that, Megan, is that they bring all their resources to the table. Right. Even though it's a rescue issue, they bring all their resources to the table immediately, not waiting, not waiting to get permission from the director or the president or the vice Vice President, we passed all of that. We passed that threshold after 9-11. U.S. Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg releasing a statement on the Key Bridge collapse. He's offering his department full support to local authorities and says, quote, I've spoken with Governor Moore and Mayor Scott to offer United States Secretary of Transportation support following the vessel strike and collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. He goes on to say rescue efforts remain underway and drivers in the Baltimore area should follow local responder guidance on detours 
and response. We're also hearing a statement from the shipping giant that chartered the vessel, Maresk. They're the company that says now, quote, we're horrified by what happened in Baltimore and our thoughts are with all those affected. City Council President Nick Mosby also issuing a statement saying in part, we're all shocked by the horrific scenes playing out at the Francis Scott Key Bridge. As the morning comes and the reality of what we're facing becomes apparent, I have the utmost confidence that Baltimore and our citizens and surrounding jurisdictions will come together and continue to support those affected by this tragic event. We're also getting more information about what exactly people heard the morning this boom went off. Take a listen to what people nearby said. We were awakened with uh, what appeared to be an earthquake and a, lo a long rolling uh, sound of thunder. Wow. So uh, we woke up and literally we can look right out of our bedroom window and see the key bridge. But I couldn't see anything because of the darkness. And a little bit later, I got up again to check and I saw some emergency lights in the area and I decided to drive up because I'm the old uh, dog and chasing the fire truck. And I uh, came up here and what was in progress was a, a multi-jurisdictional response to uh, a disaster, basically. That's right. We've got more videos and images coming into our newsroom this morning. Uh, as the sun comes up, as the sun came up earlier this morning, we got a good vantage point of just how large the shipping container is. We know it's nearly um, um, a thousand feet here that it spans, and you can see the frame of that bridge just dipping into the Francis Scott Key Bridge. More video, as we can see from the Washington Post on the water as you can see this ship just really cutting through the Francis Scott Key Bridge, what's left of it now in the water as recovery missions are underway. We heard emergency crews earlier saying they had to check the vessel of the bridge to make sure uh, no one was on there. We're still working on getting updates on that as well. Statements coming in from the Orioles who are saying they're devastated by this news, as well as the Ravens issuing their support this morning. Uh, we've already seen much from the governor and, and, and the mayor. They are out there. They were out there at the scene this morning responding uh, to to this incident. This is an image of them looking at the bridge, but just so much coming in on social media. Continue uh, to keep us updated as we will bring it to you right here live on air. Well, we are off to a cool start to the morning with temperatures in the 40s and the 50s around the state. We are one of the high spots at 52, along with Cumberland at 50. But it is still a little cool. It's going to stay that way as clouds linger throughout the day. Into the afternoon, high temperatures will rise to the low to mid 50s, and that means that will stay a couple degrees average. You'll want that extra layer as you step outside. Now, we're dry. The clouds are ahead of our next weather maker, and it's already leading to rain when we take a wider look around the region. This is ahead of our next front. This rain is going to move in starting tomorrow, and it could have impacts on your drive. Notice that by the afternoon, we're talking mostly cloudy skies. Then overnight, possibly a few stray showers leading into daybreak. Around 6, 7, 8 o'clock, we're tracking those scattered showers around the state, and then that rain gradually pushes toward the eastern shore by the afternoon. Into the evening, we stay mostly dry, but overnight, rain returns and it becomes widespread. This is how we'll start the day on Thursday morning around 7 a.m., waking up to moderate rain and potentially some spots of heavy rain. Then into the afternoon, the heavy rain tapers and it pushes toward the northeast. However, a few stray showers are possible. Notice this is around 3 p.m., so opening day could be impacted by the showers. However, by Friday, we'll have sunshine, dry weather, and plenty of uh, warmer temperatures with highs reaching the 50s and the 60s. So this afternoon, we reach a high of 54, just a couple degrees below average, mostly cloudy skies. Then tomorrow, the next weather maker arrives. That's going to lead to scattered showers starting in the morning, tapering by the afternoon. 55 for the high. We'll wake up to widespread showers on Thursday. The showers gradually start to taper into the afternoon as highs reach the upper 50s. We'll reach the 60s on Friday. Then the warming trend continues into Easter weekend. 64 on Saturday, 65 on Easter Sunday under partly cloudy skies. Then clouds return as highs stay in the mid-60s on Monday. Back to you. All right, still to come, we have new details on the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Stay tuned for a breakdown of what happened and the response. Here's a live look of the devastation. You can see what's left of the bridge and the shipping container that crashed into the pillar.
Our administration is working closely with leaders from all levels of government and society to respond to this crisis and not but just by addressing the immediate aftermath, but also by building a state that is more resilient and a state that's more safe. All of our hearts are broken. We feel your loss. We're thinking of you. And we will always be thinking of you. Our extended live coverage of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse continues. The bridge fell into the water around 1.30 this morning. You can see it right there, just stunning as it falls into the Patapsco River. That happened after a container ship hit one of the pillars. We're hearing reports that at least eight people, that's according to officials that we heard in a news conference not too long ago, eight people and possibly vehicles falling into the water. Two people have been rescued. One is in the hospital right now. We come together in Baltimore. We come together in Maryland. These were some of the first devastating images of the Key Bridge this morning. Before the sun is up, it was clear to in, difficult to see that the bridge almost completely submerged. You can see parts of it right there in the Patapsco River. And as the morning progressed, we got a better look at the images as the sun came up. We could see the extent of the damage and it is significant. The ship is nearly 1,000 feet long and arrived in Baltimore three days ago. According to VesselFinder.com, it left port just after 1 o'clock this morning. Then at 125, marine traffic data shows the ship suddenly diverted from its straight course and began to slow down. Around that time, video shows the lights of the exterior of the ship suddenly turning off and smoke began to billow from the ship's funnel. The dolly then hit a portion of the bridge at 128 this morning, causing the bridge to collapse. We're also hearing reports that the ship lost power before it crashed. The ship's lights reportedly flickered and it veered off course before it hit the bridge. Now, Governor Moore said the ship issued a mayday before colliding into the Francis Scott Key Bridge, which allowed authorities to stop incoming traffic. We're getting a statement from the shipping giant that chartered the vessel, Marsk, the company here saying, quote, we're horrified by what has happened in Baltimore and our thoughts are with all of those affected. This morning, they went on to say due to the damage to the bridge and the resulting debris, it will not be possible to reach the Helen Del Delich Bentley port of Baltimore for the time being. In line with this, we're omitting Baltimore on all our services for the foreseeable future until it is deemed safe for passage through the area. 